Hello, I'm Alfred Odierno, a high school English teacher at Bishop McNamara High School in Forestville, Maryland. And over my years as an educator and speaking with other educators, uh, they've been fascinated to learn that my father, Alfred Odierno Sr., who's here with us today, uh, was a witness to, a, you know, among his other achievements and accomplishments in his long life, uh, as a young man was a witness to the Hindenburg disaster, uh, that famous historical event. Uh, so I've got with my dad here with me today, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the um, experience that he had, not so much from the historical perspective that one can learn from any textbook, but from an eyewitness to that actual event. So dad, in your own words, uh, tell us about that day and what you experienced and what you saw. Well, I think first you have to understand that the airlines were a whole lot different than they are today. Um, we happened to be down at, uh, sent down to Lakehurst to uh, take care of the three airplanes we sent down. We were going to ferry the crews back, uh, the passengers and crews back uh, to Newark. But so, uh, but as a mechanic in those days, you did anything that was required to be done. And one of, one of the things when you worked on those things, you did what had to be done. Mm -hmm. And I, in that case, uh, I was in the second car in line headed towards uh, Hindenburg, Morgan Point. And uh, were you driving? I, I was dri I was driving it. You know, I had one of our uh, officials in the car with us who had been on the Hindenburg. And, and uh, the car directly behind me was to pick up the Hindenburg crew. Mm -hmm. So we were all lined up, ready to go. And uh, this uh, executive that was in the car with me, he um, just by a strange incident that he, he pointed to the air, uh, air was going to show me where he was on the Hindenburg. And lo and behold, that's when it, it blew up. Now, I, I don't know if any of you have any experience with uh, uh, the way uh, helium burns and when it's mixed with ox oxygen. But it, when, when it first takes off, it's just a, a, uh, just a yellow flame before you add the oxygen when it comes really an intense flame. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, uh, that. Uh, we didn't have t time to do much reacting at all. All at once, this uh, fellow was sitting in the front seat with me said, my God, let's get out of here. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I do, I was put the, put the tire in reverse, and of course the car was right behind me, and I kind of bumped it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so then we, uh, we uh, got off the road and got out in the field, and then uh, we got out of the truck and just ran, mm -hmm. ran for safety, mm -hmm. uh, which, which we were uh, fortunate, fortunate to do. Yeah. And uh, the only thing I, I saw that I could say that as it, as it was falling, I saw some of the people fall out. Mm -hmm. And of course, some of, you could see some were running away that came out of the airplane, mm -hmm. I mean, out of the Hindenburg. So uh, then we, we went back to where our airplanes were, and uh, they were in communications with our base in Newark, and they, they were reporting the survivors as they were brought to the airplane. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess there's not much more to tell after that, except that I, was, I had many, many interviews with the FBI and so on, mm -hmm. trying to get, they were trying to piece together the story. Of course, there were all kinds of stories at the time, somebody might have shot at it, and, mm -hmm. and then, uh, but, but mo mo most people thought at the time it was static electricity. Yeah, yeah. Now, when you saw the explosion, of course, everybody's seen the famous footage of it and the famous photographs and stuff. When you saw it, did it, did it appear to be an explosion, or did it burn slowly? No, it, it, it was a slow burn, that's mm -hmm. what I say. It didn't, it didn't have any uh, 
Just ask you, what did you get when you had oxygen? Yeah, so it didn't explode like a bomb. It just no, kind of no, melted no. in a flame and collapsed to the ground. No, it didn't. Yeah, yeah. No. That was something. Now, no. was there a lot of screaming and shouting and running? And Well, there was plenty of running, but there wasn't as much confusion as on the ground as you thought there might be. Yeah. Now, the, the history books tell us it all happened in about less than a minute. Oh, it was. It was very, very rapid. You know, uh, I guess maybe we didn't have time to think or to, yeah. or to get upset about it at the time. Yeah. I think I remember one time you and I were talking about the subject. You talked about when you had backed into the, the chauffeured car for the captain of the Hindenburg. Oh, yeah. How he told you later something about what happened. No, what, what was he no, saying? I was, <laughs> I was back down there and the, here's an old German gentleman and he said, look what the explosion did to, to my car. Yeah. But I, I told him that I, I did it and I, I guess uh, the company understood it because I never was reprimanded in any way before. Yeah, well, well, there were a lot of uh, there was a lot of excitement, a lot of concern, and a lot of uh, uh, epic events that day that are forever etched in in, uh, in history's book. And uh, my dad was a witness to that thing, and uh, that's uh, quite an explanation from a person who was well, actually there. Yeah, I wish I could add more to it, but I guess I was. Just I ran with the rest of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And back then, of course, there weren't cell phones and there weren't all kinds of uh, uh, movie cameras to majorly be able to capture things from many angles. Well, and that, that was supposed to be the last flight, check flight. And then after that, they're going to start regular service to, from Germany to the United States. Is that right? And that's why, as in a, a young employee of American Airlines back in the beginning of commercial aviation, you you guys were involved in that because there was going to be a commercial commercial oh, yeah. service yes, that was going to begin. Yeah. But as history tells us, after that disaster, uh, there was no more commercial of, aviation yes, for airships. Yeah. yeah but, 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 uh, the originals that were known then were. They were kind of uh, undeveloped. They, they tried to make them, but they, they were something that even in, in, in our Navy when they were operating, they crashed several times. Yeah, yeah, they didn't work. And they were, the Hindenburg was uh, kind of trying to, airships, the German airships and, and commercial, for commercial aviation were trying to make them very luxurious. Oh, they were. So, yeah, so the people who were on them were wealthy people. Well, well even uh, in those days, uh, uh, you want to confuse to what you have today with the airlines that uh, very few uh, ordinary people flew at the time. It was always uh, celebrities mm -hmm. or uh, politicians mm -hmm. or the wealthy. Yeah, yeah. Kind of not unlike the, 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 the Titanic that uh, right. was this yeah. impressive ship and, and all the wealthy people who were on it right. and, and it true. was uh, going to be a new fancy mode of travel and all that and, and look what happened and the Hindenburg uh, was captured by eyewitnesses and was captured on film and a couple of famous photographs and again by my dad's uh, historical presence of an eyewitness of being there. Um, anything else to add? No, not much. I, I, I think uh, one thing I'd like to say, remember uh, a year or two they were talking about having flight crews carrying the guns? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and they were such a big upset about it. But if, if back in those days, mm -hmm. the flight crews were carrying guns. And the way reason was they were carrying the mail. Oh, is that right? Yeah. It's because so, they were carrying mail, they, they were, were armed. They were armed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the fact that they were armed was just commonplace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And this, of course, was in 1937, and it was a German airship, and um, the, the uh, turmoil in Europe uh, was going on, so this was, there was some controversy, you know, uh, surrounding international travel and international relationships. And I guess that's some of the reason for the, the speculation on sabotage or oh, what yeah. the heck may well, happen. Yeah, the thing is where 
the greatest at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, did you, you, when you first saw the explosion, or first witnessed the fire, did you just see a simple, small flame begin oh, no. to spread? No, it, 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 it just went It just up. went? Yeah, it went up fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was over in, they say, 35 or 37 seconds? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Quite an experience, Ed. That's, That's really something. Yeah, indeed it was. Well, thank you for uh, giving us those insights and that. That's uh, very, very worthwhile and a memorable uh, life experience, to say the least. All right, thank you. Yeah, I'm very happy to do it. Well, good. All righty then. <laughs>